Hi, Else here, and in this video we're going to talk about partial year depreciation. Again, we're going to use the example of our forklift truck, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it wasn't ready for use on January 1st, 2016. We had to do a bunch of repairs. Remember we purchased a used item and then we had to repair the bar and things like that. So let's assume that instead it was ready for use on March 1st. 2016. So when is our year end? Notice we need an additional piece of information. We always need to know our year end. So our year end is December 31st every single year. So notice that in the first year we did not use it for 12 months. Instead what did we use it for? We used it for March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We used it for 10 months. Our use is what we recognize every single year. We still have the same estimated useful life, the same salvage value, and the same original cost, but now we have a different purchase date. What do we have to do? We have to go through the steps. Step number one, we already know it's $4,160. Subtract, of course, the salvage value of $560. It equals $3,600. Purchasing at a different date doesn't change anything with step number one. Step number two is to calculate the annual depreciation. $3,600 divided by six years, we've got our estimated useful life, that's going to be equal to $600 per year. Notice no change. Finally, our monthly depreciation, the $600 per year divided by 12, and it equals $50. Again, no change. So what does change? Step number four and five changes. We still have the same year end over here because our year end is December 31st. So that's not going to change. What's going to change is our depreciation expense in the first year. In year number one, which is of course 2016, we have to calculate the number of months in use. When did we place it into use? Not when did we purchase it, when did we place it into use? We placed it into use on March 1st, 2016. We know that that is 10 months to year end. The monthly depreciation is $50 per month. And then we have to multiply it times the number of months in use, which is 10. So in the first year, we only have a depreciation expense of $500. Why? Because we only used it for 10 months. So the depreciation expense in the first year is now $500. We know accumulated depreciation is all the depreciation expense since the day it was placed in use. In this case, $500. What is our book value? It's the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. Cost is $4,160. Accumulated depreciation is $500. And that would be $3,660. We're going to make an entry. We're going to first put in our entry for depreciation. What date is it? We're at December 31st. Don't touch the equipment account. Negative 500. And then we have the depreciation expense, 500. What's that going to get us at the end of the year? So year end. What's going to be the balance on our financial statements? $4,160 minus 500 and over here 500. So notice it doesn't change how we record the depreciation. We're still going to recognize that accumulated depreciation is a number that reduces the value of the asset because it accounts for its use. What do we have? We have book value of $3,660. And then we have our depreciation expense of $500, which is going to be negative impact on both profit and retained earnings. Let's jump back all the way to our chart. Here's our chart. We see that the entries are no different. So depreciation expense in 2017. Well, wait a minute. In 2017, how much did I use it? I used it for 12 months. So we know the 12 month depreciation is equal to 600 because we know it's $50 times 12. I'm going to record the $600 here. What's going to happen? Calculate my accumulated depreciation and that is going to be $1,100. Calculate my book value. We know how to do this. This of course is the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation and we're going to get 3060 
these dates. I placed the wrong dates here. Oh, my apologies. So let's keep going. We've got $600 when we're at the end of 2018. We're going to calculate the accumulated depreciation, 1,700. We're going to calculate the book value. It will be 2,460. At the end of 2019, what are we going to do? 600, because we've used it for all 12 months. We're going to calculate accumulated depreciation, which is 2,300. And then we're going to calculate the book value, 1,860. We're now at the end of 2020. 600, 2,900, 1,260. Keep in mind how we're calculating this. The 4,160 minus the accumulated depreciation. December 31st, 2021, 600. How come? Used it for 12 months. Add in, which is equal to 3,500. How much value do we have remaining? $660. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six years. We can stop right now, right? Because remember that our estimated useful life is six years. That's six times 12 months. Do we have six times 12 months in our chart? Because up here, I only have 10. Then I have 12 months, 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 then I have 12 months. I, have 12 months. I am short two months. I need to add an additional line to my chart. That would be the two months. So that's January and February. So at the end of February 2022, I've got two months of use in that period. So let's calculate two months of use, $50 times two. So in that year, it's simply going to be $100 of depreciation expense, $100. This accumulated depreciation is 3000 600 and the book value $560. Everybody remember where that $560 comes from? Let's just take a look. $560 is the residual value or salvage value. That has future benefit because we're going to sell it for that amount. So it has to remain on our financial statements as $560. Does our chart do that? Yes, our chart does that at February 28th. 2022, we will have $560 sitting in our asset. How will it look? We'll have an equipment account of 4,160, and then we're going to have less accumulated depreciation, and that accumulated depreciation will be equal to 3,600, and that will give us our book value of $560. In the next video, we're going to look at what it looks like if we happen to sell our asset at any point during the time of its life. Because even though I believe I'm going to hold it for six years, it may be somewhere in 2019, I happen to sell it. Why? I got a great deal on a new forklift. This one's not working as well. I'm expanding. There's reasons why we get rid of our old assets. In the next video, we'll look at how to do that.